Hey guys, this is Jason with Glitch in the System. Today I'm going to show you how to automate clicking of the start button and play this little click challenge game uh, only using your browser and just some basic JavaScript. So let me show you how this works. So um, I found this out on the web. It's jenniferdewalt.com and she made a click challenge uh, web page here. So basically you hit the start button and then it starts a counter and then basically you just click as many times as you want here. Uh, so why is this useful? So this is useful because number one, you can cheat and uh, impress your friends that, by saying like, "Hey, look, I got a million clicks in in sixty seconds, or or whatever you want to do." Um, or you can just use it for the purpose of I want to sh be able to show that I can automate uh, some user interaction on a website and I don't have to install anything in order to do so. I just need a browser window and I need to just know some uh, basic coding. All right, so let's take a look at this. So uh, what you're gonna need is a browser and uh, I'm gonna recommend a notepad or whatever. Uh, I use, I'm using Visual Studio Code just because I like how it does syntax highlighting and everything, just so it's more clear to see what's going on. Uh, but no requirement to do so. Um, if you want to use it, it's free, so um, no worries either way. All right, so let's take a look here. Um, first things first, we need to create, let's create a variable for this uh, element here. So I'm gonna create a let, and we'll call this uh, start button. And then this is going to equal to something here. So let's do a right click on the start button, hit go to inspect. Um, and by the way, I'm using Chrome. I highly recommend using Chrome because their developer tools makes everything that I'm doing a lot easier um, as opposed to uh, Internet Explorer or Safari or Edge um, or Firefox even. So um, you can use any of the browsers that you want. Everything should work just fine. Uh, but uh, Chrome is probably the easiest to work with. Okay. so. You can see this highlighted thing right here is is the element that we're looking at is the start button. Uh, so if you do something, if you do a right click on that and do copy, and then you can say copy JS path, and then jump on over to the console here, and if you paste that in, you can see that highlighted that button, right? So what it did was it created this document .query selector, and then it's uh, passing in the ID. So this uh, pound or hash key here is uh, CSS for ID, and then start was the name. So you can see ID start, which is equivalent to hash start, okay? So document .query selector will give you one element. So you can see it's, it's uh, when we paste that in there again, it highlights that element, and that's, that's the element that, that we want. So that is what we are going to paste in here. So let's start button equals document dot query selector start. Okay. And then uh, let's go ahead and just clear this. And then first thing we're going to do is just uh, click this button. So it's as simple as uh, we're going to do write the script in here. So start button dot click. Okay. And then we're going to put our open and close parentheses there and what we can do is just copy this and paste it in here just like that and hit the enter key and you can see that that is the equivalent of me clicking the start button okay so now the next thing we need to do is we need to increment this so if I copy this so start button dot click and hit enter notice that nothing is happening so let's take a look at why so let's do an inspect here and then let's see I start button all right so let's try again so this ID start button is here now and then when I click start the start button is supposed to be there still but I'm not seeing it here. Uh, but it, what it looks like is the container for this is set to display none. Uh, so that's why you can't see the start button anymore, okay? And basically what I'm clicking on after the start button is this number here, um, or it looks like I can, I can click anywhere, anywhere on the page, right? 
So let's 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 take a look at that. So let me do a right click inspect, and then you can see this div ID of uh, counter. So let's grab the JS path for that, throw that in the console, and then you can see that we have that. So when I click on that, that will increment it. So let's create another variable here. So let's do a let. Uh, let's call this counter equals and then paste that in there. So now we have that. And now what we can do is uh, counter dot click. Okay. And let's go ahead and copy this. Um, try again and let's just clear out everything here. Right, so paste that all in and hit enter and you can see that we are now at two. So start button uh, sets things up and that lets us start this up. So start will be a count of one. So I'll put a comment here. So this will be a count of one and then that first click will be a count of, of two, right? Okay, and basically now if I just put this counter dot click in here and now you can see that I can control the clicks through here, right? So in theory, I can do some, oh, I can do something silly like this and it will work. So let's do try again, paste and enter. And you can see it, it just instantly uh, did nine. And you're not going to see it because this these actions are happening immediately afterwards. So it's too fast for um, you to be able to see any any changes because it's just uh, going into the system and uh, it's just going to happen. So uh, that's the bad way to do it. So let's do this in a better way. So let's say I want to have uh, 100 clicks. So we know the start button is one click. So we need to add 99 more clicks. So for that, we can add a simple for loop. So for, and then we can say let i equals zero, and then i is less than, uh, so 99, because remember zero through 99, and then i plus plus, and then you can just do the oops, counter dot click, save that, and let's see how this works. So let's try again, uh, paste this in here, and hit enter. And there you go, you can see instantly we have 100. And we can set this number to be whatever we want it to be. So if I paste it in here, and I put uh, 999, uh, we can do that. So I need to start the game over again though. So I can do a refresh, okay, and enter. And now we have a thousand, right? So super simple, easy way to to kind of uh, simulate clicking this and and uh, kind of cheating at this game if you want. Um, but let's do it in a different way. So right now this is not like an elegant way, and people will be like, it'll be obvious that you're cheating, right? Um, because uh, you can kind of like hide this window and like just hit enter key and and just pretend like you're doing stuff over here. Uh, but if, if it goes from nothing into a thousand or a million within within one click, then people are gonna know you're cheating, right? So let's do this in a better way. So what we can do is, let's do still do a loop. So let's do for let i equals zero. And then i is less than 99 and then i plus plus okay but in here what we're going to do is we're going to use set timeout so what set timeout does is it creates a kind of an interval so it does a delay basically so it's going to do something after a specified delay so i'm going to show you this real quick So what you need to do is set timeout, and then this is going to be have a function within it, and then this is going to take one more thing, which is after that curly brace, and this is how long uh, you want the timer to be. Okay, so that's going to be 500 milliseconds is going to be half a second. So I can just go ahead and copy all this, and let's paste that in there, and you can see 
different, right? So you, you saw that it clicked start and then it waited for half a second and then it did everything. Um, so that's kind of how it's gonna work within a loop here, uh, but we can make that better. So what we can do is to put a function in here and then put I and put a curly brace there. And basically add after this one here, we need to do a curly brace like this and put an I in there and let's see and then this one we need to do uh, times I so it looks a little complicated but um, this is called a, a iffy so I F F E I F E I I F I I F I I F E I always forget the number of letters so um, if you want to learn more about ifies, uh, you can go into here. So these are immediately invoked function expressions. But if you don't care about that, um, just keep, kind of move on. Uh, just copy what this is. And basically, let's just go ahead and co copy all this. Uh, hit try again here. Paste that in. And now this looks more realistic, right? And you can have this running uh, if you're just trying to like cheat with your cheat on your friends um, playing this game you can have it running and then you can do your own clicks but uh, basically the ones that you're automating are going to keep on going in the background so you can uh, kind of get a little little speed bump right um, so let's see so what I could do is something like I can set this timer down to like maybe 200 milliseconds and then I'll set this to 999 clicks copy this, hit try again, and then paste, and then hit enter. And now you can see it's going a lot faster. And if I pad that, then I can easily, right, get up to a higher number. Um, but yeah, so pretty pretty simple. This is a kind of, I would, I would save this kind of snippet here uh, for this type of things. If you were ever wanting to automate something uh, that's kind of time-based where you need to do a loop like this, uh, I would do it like this and yeah so uh, as I said however you want to use this if you want to use this to to uh, cheat when you're playing with this game uh, against your friends uh, then you can do that otherwise uh, this is good learning for how to actually automate uh, web pages or web applications without installing any frameworks or uh, doing much other than uh, writing some some JavaScript and looking at uh, how the web application is built.